Predators, uh, have always been a threat to us. They just kind of gobble you up out of nowhere. I mean, we aren't exactly tasty. We taste kind of acidic, but I guess we're edible. My brother Carl and I were out for, uh, you know, a fly. Ah, uh, he, he was still a caterpillar back then. And, well, they got Carl. Uh, I look over, everything's fine and dandy. Then I, I blinked. One minute he's there, next he's gone. I see some cardinal flying away. Carl somewhere in his stomach. It's not just cardinals either, it's lots of birds that think we taste pretty good. Grackles, robins, scrubs, pinions, sparrows, you name it. And it's not just birds either. We have parasites in the species. Little buggers latch on and mess you up. I once heard of a guy who got to molt and suspend, but died for a pupation. Poor guy. There's also a black death. I heard it called other stuff too, like Magaka Festifideca Damini. But we all know it as black death. It's a bacteria that infects you and kills you off. We call it Black Death on account of it turns you all black when you look, when you kick the bucket. Then there's the Black Swallow Wart. It's a plant similar to milkweed. We tend to confuse it with milkweed and lay our eggs on there. But it poisons our larva. And of course, and of course, last but Certainly not least, deforestation. Killing the plants kills our food and nesting grounds. Bye bye, butterfly, if you get rid of those. Imagination! Pollination! Migration across the nation. These butterflies give us a lot. Amen. Oh, you know what else they do, sir? What? You know what they do? They pollinate the flowers that photosynthesize the air for us to breathe. Woo. And, sir, they also pollinate the fruit, the fruits, and the vegetables that give us food to eat. Tell me, sir, tell me! If you had a steak and that ran off, you know what would happen to you? Do you know what would happen, what would happen to, to you? Me? It would kill you. You would die from starvation. Oh, God. Sir, yes, sir, you would die. And you know what else, sir? What, sir? That would keep on the food chain. And it would just keep killing people. And you would die. And the next person would die. And on and on and on and on! But butterflies, oh butterflies, uh, beautiful, magnificent, they give us creation, they create light. And Lord Almighty, Lord, they give us beauty. Okay, our next product we have for sale is this half pound bag of mixed milkweed, as you can see here. This is a large supply of that precious little plant that gets you by and keeps your kids moving. This half pound bag should be about a six month supply, but it depends on how much you eat. So, yeah. Of course, you can never have too much milkweed, and this should be plenty, giving you a wide variety of different types of milkweed. We'll put this one up at about $17.79, so give us a call if you're interested. Okay, let's see. Next up is this bottle of 10-year-old Saladago Nectar. 
For you grown-ups out there, this will surely hit the spot. Straight out of a ten-year-old goldenrod plant. This nectar is sure to satisfy and fill you up when milkweed is in short supply. We'll put this one up for about 2025. And finally, our biggest product we've sold this year, we call the Villa. This lovely property is located in a bright and sunny field. It is full milkweed garden, a large garden of plants producing many popular types of nectar. Large branches for the chrysalis is needed, and nice damp soil for any ma males who feel like mud puddling. All of this can be yours for the price of $4,250.23. Only one person can own this little piece of heaven, so call fast! Hello, and welcome back to the Gardening Channel, Monarch Hour. Today, we're going to be showing you, the viewers at home, how to grow the Monarch's favorite plant, milkweed. Now, Monarchs use milkweed for a number of different reasons. The Monarch larva can only eat milkweed when they're young, so Monarchs tend to lay their eggs near milkweed source. Adult Monarchs eat milkweed too, but have adapted so that they can eat other plants as well. Now, you're going to want to plant the seeds when there's absolutely no threat of frost killing the seeds. You're going to want to find a bright and sunny patch of land to plant your seeds in and pick all of the weeds from the area. Plant the seeds about an eighth of the inch into the ground and make sure you keep the ground nice and moist, but don't soak it. You don't want to drown the seeds. In about 10 days, you should see some seedlings sprouting up. Make sure to keep their leaves fanned out to make sure that they don't rot. In about 10 days, you should have some seedlings that look something like this. Assuming that you keep the plants moist and the leaves spread out, you should have some milkweed and some great monarchs to come with it. Happy planting, people! Kids. Now that we've learned about monarch butterflies, what are some ways that we can help? Timmy? Well, we could build them butterfly gardens and then make them live there in the Great idea. How about you, Jimmy? We could tell people about the butterflies and we, they could help make their own gardens. Excellent. Speaking up is a great way to help. What if they don't listen to us? Timmy, if you put your heart and your soul into it, and you present good facts, it's sure that they'll listen to you. How else can we help? We can volunteer at local parks, and we can grow milkweed, and create monarch habitat. I think you guys have the main idea. High five. <laughs> I have to teach the world about the monarch butterfly. Goodbye, Flappy! <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Butterflies. <laughs>